Today's evolving threats spread quickly to cause tremendous damage to the organization. Defenders need to know as soon as something hits the water and should be able to take appropriate action. Cisco StealthWatch provides real-time threat detection by applying security analytics to the telemetry from every part of the network. It is also integrated with the Cisco Identity Services Engine, or ICE, to get a 360-degree view of the who, what, when, and how of the threat. You can not only detect a threat, but you can also find out the source of the threat, where else it might have propagated, and take action to stop it, all from within StealthWatch. So here we are on the StealthWatch dashboard. Across the top we see today's active alarms. Over here on the left we see the top alarming host in the environment, uh, the alarm trend, as well as uh, active alarms today. Um, over here on the left in the top alarming hosts, we can see a couple hosts that have fairly high concern index, high data hoarding, as well as policy violations. As we scroll down, we see that this host here at the top, 10.90.90.101, has an active uh, detection of cryptocurrency mining based on uh, encrypted traffic analytics. Uh, so what we're gonna do is click on this host, 10.90.101, uh, and take us into the report page for this host. Um, so this is in the host report or the host dashboard. We get a quick view and everything StealthWatch knows about this host. Across the top, we see a number of alarms associated with this host today. High concern index, data hoarding, and policy violation. Um, this is concerning to us given the traffic patterns that we see with this host, including contacting PCI servers and confidential servers inside of our organization. We can see that the uh, some of the policy violations are related to violating uh, TrustSec or security group policy, uh, particularly in this case, uh, a host in the employee's security group has attempted or potentially successfully communicated with management desktops. Um, this is based off of TrustSec metadata collected from the Identity Services Engine. We can see over here on the left the active uh, MAC address of this host, uh, and this is again telemetry from the Identity Services Engine. Scrolling down, we can see some of the alarms associated with this host, suspect data hoarding, suspect long flow, uh, custom security events that have fired. We can also see that the user Larry is the current logged in user. In fact, all of this information in this user sessions widget um, is telemetry metadata from the Identity Services Engine over PX Grid. We can see that Larry is the, the most active user on this host uh, all day. Um, as we reach the bottom, we can see that uh, today this host has done cryptocurrency mining for approximately the last four hours. Um, this again is a detection based on encrypted traffic analytics. So scrolling back up, what we're going to do is take immediate action. This host has exhibited suspicious activity inside of the environment. So what we would like to do is instruct the Identity Services Engine to issue a change of authorization and change the authorization that this host has on the networks, the permissions of what it is able to do. To do that, we're gonna leverage a feature called the Adaptive Network Control feature. So we're gonna click Edit here next to the label that said ISA and C policy. And in this dropdown, we can see all of the available policies that we can apply to this host. We can take a drastic action, such as shutting the host down. We can quarantine the host we can apply a authorization that will not allow the host to have web access, or we're gonna select this one called suspicious. ANC suspicious really just means we've been implemented policy on ICE to restrict access for this host, as well as potentially uh, watching this host deeper with other security tools uh, to try to identify what it is doing on the environment. So clicking save um, instructs ICE to issue that change of authorization. Um, ICE will disconnect the host from the network, it will reconnect, and it will have a new authorization profile applied to it. Switching over to the Identity Services Engine ta uh, tab, we can view this new policy. So we can see that the user Larry was on the network as an employee, a change of authorization was initiated, he was disconnected and reconnected to the, uh, to the network, and the suspicious employee's authorization profile was applied to Larry.
This feature, called Adaptive Network Control and in the solution framework of rapid threat containment, greatly accelerates the response. In this example, we've gone quickly from a confirmed security event to changing the permissions that this host has on the network and restricting our access to critical resources in the network while we continue to investigate and manage this event.